Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Van Heusen Power Plates. Join me as we embark on a journey of inspiration and success stories. We're here today to shine the spotlight on two remarkable women from the entrepreneurial world. Their inspiring journeys as pitch winners on national television highlights the power of dedication and determination. And we at Van Heusen are proud to rub shoulders with them here today. I'm thrilled to introduce our extraordinary guests, Arpita Aditi, founder of Dil Foods, and Anuva Kakkar, founder of Tiggle Chocolate Drinks. So without further ado, let's welcome them at Van Heusen Power Plates. Hello ladies, Hi, how Mithala. are you doing today? All well, All Super well. Excited. Thank you for having us here, Mithila. Thank you, we're so excited to have you here as well. This promises to be a great chat. Did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? And uh, where did the idea for Tiggle come from? So I go back to my college life. Uh, when I was doing my graduation, those three years, uh, the first year of my college, uh, is when the entrepreneurship cell opened up uh, mm. in the college. Mm. And I became one of the first volunteers there. Mm. Exactly that's when I thought that I want to build something. Then I realized that there's, a, there's an interesting space uh, where people have innovated so much in drinks, in, in the cold beverage section. And when you come to hot, there's only teas and coffees and old age uh, uh, brands. So, and that time I realized I used to go to my colleagues and you know, tell that, hey, we can create a chocolate drinks brand and it can have like iced chocolates and hot chocolate and can serve as a great evening beverage. Mm. And then one of my uh, colleague actually told me this, that, hey, you're talking about this idea for such a long time it's better you go out and test it out uh, because ideas will always seem like a billion dollar idea yeah. until and unless it's not executed. Yeah. So with bare minimum resources uh, I had, I bought like this second hand table, yeah. uh, got myself a big steel jar and uh, went outside a metro station in Gurgaon to sell my chocolate drinks wow. and see how people <laughs> react to it. I'd lie if I say I wasn't scared. Uh, I was really scared. It was a new city for me first of all. And Mithila also like a girl standing outside metro station <laughs> selling something. It sounds uh, really uh, not so usual, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I still remember, right? Like the queue formed there and people were more curious ki what I am doing there instead of what I'm trying to sell. Yeah. But I think that was exactly one moment uh, from where Tiggle uh, happened or Tiggle started. Yeah. Did you have a similar experience? Where did, where did your journey really begin? So I had a very different experience in fact, I in fact didn't even know what entrepreneurship meant, right? Um, I wanted to go to a very good college and uh, just lead a very good corporate life but uh, uh, things you know changed when uh, I went to the college, things were super expensive there and just to earn my pocket money I started doing some part-time jobs. Mm. Um, I was always a very good cook, a very good you know I used to call myself a chef even back then. So um, I started my own tela as well uh, while wow. I was in college. Um, so after graduation as well, um, hustling through, I somewhere landed to Swiggy. Uh, now, I was super excited about the food industry because I thought that anyone who is in food industry is making a lot of money, probably sleeping on money, <laughs> bathing in money. <laughs> But um, when I joined Swiggy and uh, slowly a lot of small restaurants started reaching out to me saying that uh, you know we're not able to make any money, our business is about to get shut down uh, and that really perplexed me that what is happening, why is there a major gap between these large chains and smaller chains. Um, and my trigger point was when uh, there was one restaurant from where I always used to order chicken pakoda on a regular basis and one fine day it just got shut down and I figured that uh, uh, they were not really making money and uh, even though their products were good they didn't know how to run their business uh, successfully and that's where I realized that I want to build something with these small and medium restaurants yeah. I didn't know what I didn't know how but I quit Swiggy and I just started up that's amazing. so that's how that's it amazing. happened that's such a I mean, there's an underdog story inside an underdog story in there. So that's really beautiful. 
Okay, Mithila, before you move on to the next question, I would love you to have our ice chocolate and yeah. share your reaction. Yes, honest reaction. Honest reaction. Honest reaction is what you'll get. Please I have yourself. been seeing this and I've been waiting to try it. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for bringing it up. Thank you. It's anyway super hot here, so yeah, yeah. we all need this. <laughs> I love it. I very love refreshing. It. I'm having a chocolate nice. drink after so long. Yeah. I feel like I'm a kid again. I love it. business has changed so much over the years and if there's one thing we keep talking about now it's diversity what's your view on diversity and how do you think it's contributed to innovation and disruption in your business so dil foods team is quite diverse there is cultural diversity there is gender diversity uh, there is a lot of diversity in their professional expertise as well there's diversity in demography as well and all these things combined they bring a very different perspective on all the problems so problem solving becomes uh, you know really a cake walk for us because of these diverse backgrounds not just that uh, the kind of food we serve we serve mm. food from different parts of india so our entire customer base is quite diverse as well so while we are talking about diversity here i see there are a lot of diverse food options yeah. from dil here so why don't you try it yeah of super course. excited let me know how do you like it yeah so i was craving a mm. bread pakora uh, because i live away from home and this is really good a touch of like Masala so now that we're on to the main course, let's really take a bite into your journeys. Uh, Anuva, I'll start with you this time. Okay. Um, I'm sure in entrepreneurship there are many challenges that you face, particularly as a solo entrepreneur, right? What has it been like, and can you talk to us about some of these challenges? Definitely, when you have to do legal, product, branding, marketing, hiring, team building. all of that together as a solo founder it gets really hard on some days i had my cry session just yesterday night <laughs> right so you will break a lot in this journey uh, and it's really hard uh, because you are like the one person uh, running the show but it has a great benefits as well uh, at least uh, this is how i see uh, today i'm not the only pillar integral there are three others as well right so when you are a solo founder and you do not have another person to rely on you start delegating from the get go to your team mm -hmm. and then your this team the first set of 5 or 10 people who join you becomes the leaders mm -hmm. and that's how i feel though it's a challenging journey to be a solo founder just delegating from the get go really helps yeah Yeah, yeah. What do you feel? I really echo that. Uh, as a solo founder, you're just not working eight nine hours a day. It's a twenty four seven journey throughout the year. Uh, there are sleepless nights, and of course, there are crying your heart out nights. But you sleep over it, and you go back to office next day with a smile, discuss with your team, and get things solved. Um, I think when you're a solo founder. your team really becomes your co-founder yeah. if you are a good leader you would never say that you're a solo founder your team inherently becomes your co-founder so that's how it has been for me that's so beautifully put um i think uh, i think that's something i'm going to remember forever when you're a solo founder your team is your co-founder really nice and it's interesting both of you mentioned crying i want to i want to take that up um is that is it okay to be vulnerable that's also something that just it's so us right if you are excited and happy and you are celebrating it together then so is the uh, emotions which are not so positive let's say crying or being really sad about something mm. so you share it with your team and move on i think that's the beauty of entrepreneurship right like you will have those uh, breakdown session very often but then you get back with the same smile every single day You know, I remember one such incident that happened last year. Uh, we were fundraising then, and uh, you know, as founders, we are super optimistic. We always think that hey, money will just come in in a month or two. Uh, but reality did really check in, and uh, we realized it takes eight to nine months to get the money in. And we absolutely had no money in our bank account because we were not prepared for it. Uh, 
and we didn't know how would we pay salaries how we had recently taken a new factory as well we didn't know how things would turn out um, but i think like i said that uh, you know when you're a solo founder your team really becomes your co-founder so i went back and discussed this with my team and we all sat together and we were eating food and we were figuring out that what new business verticals we could launch to get more money flowing back into our bank accounts and we made that happen in 7 days in 7 days we were profitable in 7 days we had money flown in our bank account and we were surviving and we realized that you know come what may we are always going to survive we are always going to sustain the business Yeah, like they say, adversity gets the best Absolutely. out of you, right? Absolutely. I'm sure you have a story like this, this as well. This makes me. This makes me actually remember uh, when we launched a girl. Uh, the day when the website was launched, I thought, okay, up to a lot of sales came, a lot of orders came, right? And uh, the first couple of days, I just spent looking at the razor pay screen, day in and day out. Every other hour, I'm on my razor pay screen, just looking at what's the growth in the sales, and the sales doesn't come that way. right so those were those early days when you figure out that launching website won't help things have to be beyond launching just a website uh, were really interesting but then i also feel that every single day like your question on uh, the most difficult challenge uh, we faced is every 31st or first uh, the pay day uh, yeah. is when you have to go back to your accounts and figure out how much money you have in the bank yeah. account and i think the challenge comes every first of month You know, if only back then we knew that we could come till here. We'd yeah. be so much calmer. Yeah. Right? Um, Arpita, from your experience as an entrepreneur, what role do you think the right attire plays in your outlook and your confidence? A very important one. Like I said, um, we have highs and lows in our startup journey. and there are few days when you're not feeling so confident not feeling so nice about yourself and maybe about the business as well and when you wear something powerful like i wear something like this on a daily basis when i go to work uh you really get empowered from within you really feel quite confident about yourself and uh, uh mostly uh the kind of business that i do when i have to meet a lot of restaurant partners and i'm going to tell them that hey this is how you do business i really have to play the part as well right so it really works out for me anuva is it the same for you so for me personally style and discovering my style has been a very different journey uh, for the longest time i viewed clothes as just garments uh, right it's very lately that i discovered the power of right clothing and the power of right outfit for the right occasion uh I was very inclined towards comfort so I used to pick the loosest clothes as I was telling you right uh but then it's now when I realize that comfortable can also be a part of style like comfort and style can coexist mm. and uh, I've seen myself like wearing one right out- outfit uh when presenting your idea to a bunch of people can really impact how you are perceived as a person yeah that's absolutely I mean uh, from I just recall that uh, during my pitch I was wearing this electric blue Van Zandt business suit and that made me feel so confident uh, I was initially nervous but uh, when I went on stage and I saw my reflection wearing that business suit I knew that I got this and I think I did get it That's really amazing. How much like one outfit can really change you from yeah. the inside, Absolutely. right? You talked about your changing style. As your style changed, did you also find your personality actually changing? I think personality definitely evolves uh and it goes back to me saying that it feels it just makes you feel more comfortable uh right? Uh so yeah. But you know on a lighter note because this is Van Heusen power plates. What fashion advice would you give budding entrepreneurs? Be, be yourself. yourself. <laughs> wow, you guys tried that, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, be yourself and dig into some food as well. I love cheese boards. Okay, it's time for desserts and I think now it's time to show not tell. So you guys are successful entrepreneurs. Your calendar is filled with all kinds of events like investor meets, recordings like this one, events, outings, etc. Which Van Heusen outfit would you choose for these different kind of events? Shall we show them? Yeah. Yes.
So yeah, that was Anuva and Arpita. If you too have an entrepreneurial journey, share it with us in the comments below. And always know that we at Van Heusen are your biggest cheerleaders. That's Van Heusen Power Plates. Thank you.